Howdy. In this lesson, we're going to be putting another equation into our toolbox for the analysis. So the Biosavart law was initially um, created for electricity and magnetism, uh, specifically looking at a wire that had some current I along the wire, uh, which generated some magnetic field, which we're calling B. And what it says is that if you take some infinitesimal segment of this wire and give it a direction, dl, um, then this will have an effect on the magnetic field at a point P, which is some distance away, r. And we can say that this is going to be downward. And the effect of this tiny point, or this tiny piece of the wire DL, is going to be a differential piece of magnetism, uh, which can be defined as mu, which is the electromagnetic constant, times I over 4 pi. Uh, and all of that times DL cross R over the magnitude of R cubed. Well, we have a very similar situation. We have a vortex filament with some strength gamma. And we want to analyze the velocity at a point P, which is due to the velocity field created by this uh, vortex filament. So once again, we can look at an infinitesimal segment of this, of this vortex filament uh, that is some distance r away from our point p. Uh, and this generates a velocity. So the differential piece of our velocity that's generated by uh, this piece of the, the vortex filament is going to be gamma over 4 pi uh, times the same uh, piece of math that we have up here. So this is going to be dl across r over the absolute value, the, lot, the absolute value, the uh, magnitude of r cubed. All right, so this is one piece of our velocity, but really we're interested in the entire velocity. So how do we get that? Well, let's do this for a simple case. Let's look at our infinite vortex filament, which in 2D we called a point vortex. So this goes from negative infinity to positive infinity in some direction. Um, and we're going to be looking at some infinitesimal segment of that. Uh, and it has some vorticity gamma. We're going to be interested in a point P. And we want to find the velocity um, at that point P. So let's create our dV, uh, which will be exactly what we had here. We're not changing anything. Um, but our velocity will be the integral of dv from negative infinity to infinity. So this will be gamma over 4 pi, that's all constant, times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of dl crossed with r all over r cubed. Well, um, we can find the magnitude of this uh, if we define a theta. So let's define a theta from our wire to our distance r. And the magnitude of dl cross r is going to be equal to r times sine theta times dl. OK, that's great. How do we get there? Well, we need to take the magnitude of the entire thing. Uh, this is the only piece that has direction, so we can uh, take the magnitude just of this section. And we'll end up with gamma over 4 pi times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of r times sine theta times dl all over r cubed. So we can simplify this right away by saying that these r's cancel out. And now what we want to do is get all of this in terms of a single variable. And the variable that we're going to use is theta. So first off, let's write um, 
L and R as a function of some constant and theta. So what constant are we going to choose? We are going to choose the distance of our point P to this wire. And we're going to call that H. So H is going to be equal to R times sine theta. If we define some L, L is going to be equal to R times cosine theta. So we can define R as being equal to H over sine theta. And then if we plug that in here, we see that this is equal to H over tangent of theta. And what we're interested in is DL. That's what we need to replace. So DL is going to be equal to negative H over sine squared theta d theta. So now let's write this entire thing as a function of theta. Uh, we're going to start off by writing sine theta dl over r squared as a function of theta. So we're going to replace all these things. So sine theta dl over r squared is going to be equal to uh, sine theta. Uh, dl is going to be negative h over sine theta d theta. And then 1 over r squared is going to be sine. Uh, this needs to be sine squared theta. So we have sine squared theta here. Uh, sine squared theta over h squared. So these cancel out. Uh, one of these cancels out. And we're left with negative sine theta d theta. So our velocity magnitude is going to be equal to gamma over 4 pi times the integral from, and now we also need to replace these. So negative infinity occurs when pi is e or when theta is equal to pi. Infinity occurs when theta is equal to 0. So we're integrating from pi to 0 of negative sine theta uh, over h d theta. And this will be equal to gamma over 4 pi h. The integral of negative sine theta is going to be positive cosine theta. So this will be cosine of 0 minus a cosine of pi. Cosine of 0 is equal to 1. Cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. So this means that the magnitude of our velocity is going to be gamma over 2 pi h. And this is exactly what we expect to see, because this is the equation that we had for our point vortex.